Hey guys, it's Jackie from Homeschool Hangout by Nerd Family. And today we are talking about five timer tips for working at home with kids. If you like these kinds of helpful tip driven videos, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up while you're thinking about it and let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, of course, this is a homeschool channel, but I have done some level of blogging or working part time and different things throughout my entire homeschooling career with my children. And here are some tips and tricks that might help you use a timer to your benefit to get things done during the day. Especially with so many people now who have their children home all of a sudden and they're working from home. Uh, this is a new situation I think for most people. So my first tip, set check-in times with your kids. It reduces the urgency for them to have to run into your office or closet or bathroom or wherever you're working every five minutes. Now, this doesn't mean they can't come talk to you. And that, that is one of the things with all of these timer tips. This is not etched in stone. These are just ways to help drive your day to more being more productive. So if you tell your kids, don't worry, if I don't hear, hear you or see you, if you're lucky enough to have a house where you can put them in a room where you don't hear or see them, I will check on you, let's say at 10 and 2. But even if you just want to do it quickly, 9, 1, 3. Whatever that is that works for you based on the age of your kids, you tell them, don't worry, mom or dad is going to be back to check on you. It helps bring down the anxiety when they have a question. And let's be honest, we are no better than our children in that aspect. We go, oh, you know what? I wonder if Susie can do this. And then you automatically stop what you're doing at work and rabbit trail off. Kids are no different. So this tip helps them be a little calmer, be a little bit more, okay, cool, nothing emergent. I don't need to bother them. Two, I highly recommend a food schedule. I know that sounds so uptight, but hear me out. This is including snack breaks. Why? Well, one, they don't have to come in, depending on the age of your kids, and say, Mom, Mom, can I have a granola bar? Mom, Mom, I'm kind of hungry. Can I have some cheese? Mom, Mom, I'm kind of hungry. I can't. Okay. This is something kind of from school that I've always held on to, partially because I've always struggled with my weight, but we kind of set times. And that means if you need to make them food, you can put that on your schedule, so to speak, even if that schedule is just in your head. But if you know at 10 and 2, they want a snack, or 10 and 3, and we're going to have lunch at 12. Now, you say, but Jackie, what if my kids are older and they can fend for themselves? Think, put yourself in your children's shoes or whatever you did yesterday when you were like, you know what, I have work to do and I really don't want to focus. You know what, I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to go just wander around the kitchen for 30 minutes. It helps eliminate that. It helps stop them from grazing all day, not eating anything really healthy, and just putting off their own schoolwork. So definitely, food schedule, post it if you need to, <clears throat> whatever you need to do, because then they know they're going to get fed. They're going to get their snacks. They don't need to ask when lunch is. They don't need to ask you if they can have a snack now. And you don't have to interrupt your day to get them food. Though I do really highly recommend if your kids are past about second grade, you teach them how to make their own lunch. Frankly, my kids make my lunch often. Mom, we're going to eat. Is there anything I can bring you? Would you like a soda? Would you like? Yes, I am that spoiled. Though I will say they learned that kindness from their father. Uh, number three, subject time blocks. Now, what do I mean by that? This is helping your children learn how to be productive. This is more for them and less for you. But what we do is Monday morning in my household, I have a, a sophomore in high school, he's just newly a sophomore in high school, who is finishing up his algebra two from last year. So the first thing he does on Monday morning is he does an hour's worth of math. Why an hour? Why not an hour and a half? Why not till he's done? Because he's doing algebra two, which is a challenge. And if he sits there until he's done or sits there without a timer, he will get lost in the minutia. 
we often say that you lose productivity the longer you do something. So for your kid, I'm not saying an hour, this is a very specific thing for him, but set a timer. And if every 20 or 30 minutes or hour, however long your child can focus, they change subjects, they're gonna have a burst of energy and a burst of productivity. And this goes back to setting, you know, when you're gonna check on them schedules, it helps them put aside their questions that they have in that subject until you have time to deal with it. And that is a big part of it, you know? And, and when I say this, I mean, I have a call from 11 to 12 today with a coaching client that I'm coaching right now for business. And my children are not allowed to come in. They're just not. But they're also scheduling their own stuff around that. So, and we'll get more to that, my conference, I mean, my coaching call later. But, it helps prevent your brain from being blocked. This is why I like things like the Pomodoro method. I like, there's like 50 different methods that all have some sort of, we're gonna do 15 minutes of cleaning and then we're gonna be done, or we're gonna do 20 minutes of working really hard. It also helps them not um, go off on rabbit trails, especially since so many kids now are working on computers and computers provide us with so much more distraction than that MacBook ever did. So subject time blocks, Tweak that time to what's appropriate for your child. Um, I think that math for an hour is a, is a good block for a high school student who's doing an advanced math subject. I, in reality, would have probably put 20 minutes for elementary school at most and then had them change. You just need to tune it to what they need because you also don't want to frustrate them that they just start getting in a groove and the timer goes off and they have to move. So... It, this is going to be a, could be a bit of trial and error for you guys and your students. Okay, number four kind of goes hand in hand with number three, and it's scheduling activity blocks in the day. Now, what this looks like will depend on the independence of your child, the age of your child, always, all of these things. I am very blessed and very, my kids are older and we always really push this independence anyways. But what does that look like? It could be anything from my 13 year old likes to take a walk every morning. So she has specific things she has to get done and then she can go walk for 20 minutes or a half hour, whatever time. And sometimes she's like, I wanna take a long walk, I wanna take a short walk. It's hot here. It's you know approaching 80 by 10 o'clock in the morning. So we put that early in the day. It could be something as simple and we've done this, especially when they were younger of, Every about 40 minutes, they do something. Um, it could be um, jumping jacks. It could be a dance break for the entire family because you need to get up and get your blood circulating too. That's part of the reason things like the Pomodoro Method exist of you take short breaks and then a long break is get up, get your blood going, even if you're going back to the same task. So set those up because one of the concerns too with our children doing school at home is how are they getting the same physical activity they would have gotten when they were doing recess, when they were going between classes, when they were walking to the school bus. So schedule some of those in, and it doesn't always have to be just 10 or 15 minutes in the middle of something. It could be you're done with school by one, and now you're gonna go play soccer for an hour. Whatever that looks like based on your weather, your children, all those good things. Make it work for you. The other thing that that helps to really alleviate is one of the reasons we started doing it with my kids was honestly my oldest son. He'd sit there and he'd sit there and even if he changed subjects, he would hit a mental wall. And the only way to break that wall was for him to get up. He also did really well with like yoga ball, sitting on a yoga ball for school and being given to something to fidget with. So that that's an overall thing. But he would just get up and he would do, you know, get up and do 20 jumping jacks. Okay, now I'm going to sit back down. Gets the blood pumping, gets the heart going. So activity blocks. Don't forget those. And the last thing is I like to call it the do not disturb block. Now, of course, we started with setting times that you're going to check on your students. Now, but if they really have a question, if whatever, they may come in anyways. Okay, fine, they just can't resist, they can't wait, fine. There's nothing wrong with setting up do not disturb blocks. And when I say that, I mean I have a coaching call from 11 to 12. If this isn't something that has to do with anyone's safety 
anyone's health or any catastrophes has happened, they're not allowed to come in and bug me. And for the record, my husband's working in the same room with me, so they don't have access to either one of us. Rarely is there a math question so emergent that it can't wait 45 minutes or an hour. Now, how long your do not disturb blocks really is going to depend on the age of your children. And when my kids were in first, second, third grade, I couldn't say, you can't come in for an hour. But what I could do is say, okay, if you get stuck with this assignment, here is the next thing you can do, or here is a fun activity you can do. Let's be honest, here's a TV show you can watch, whatever that is. But I would say, you can't come in. I'm sorry, you can't come in. And similarly, the backside, I hear you. I hear you saying, but Jackie, if I tell them that if they get stuck, they can watch TV or they can play a game or they can do anything funner, they're going to get stuck immediately. Yes. But if they can't be done with their day till their homework is done, meaning they can't go outside and play, they can't play video games, they can't do X, Y, or Z, there's a motivation for them to keep working. So don't worry too much about that. But there is nothing wrong with saying, I'm closing my office door, bathroom door, closet door, whatever door that is, or you're going to go sit in your room and work on your homework for 20 minutes or wherever, wherever you're sticking them. I'm very blessed. I have an office. I can just close the door and I've had an office in the last two houses, but the previous one I did not. There was some, you're going to go do this and I'm going to go in my room and work. They'll be fine. I promise they'll be fine. Now, if there's blood involved, if, there, if there's anything that you would normally interrupt a meeting for, they can come in. But if it's just we're fighting, oh, they learn really quick to start resolving issues amongst themselves. Because I would put it on them after a certain age, second, third grade, and say, you know what? If I have to come out and deal with you because of this fighting, you aren't going to be allowed to be in here together and I'm going to have to make other plans. And there were some times in which I had to say, this kid, you go here, this kid, you go there because they hadn't quite worked out some issues. It happens. But this is a way that you teach your kids. We have to make life work for each other. This is a team. And in many ways, while it's not a timer trick, remember, you want to teach your children to be good people. You want to teach your children to, if you're a Christian, to be godly people. You want to teach your children how to work in a team. People are so worried about your kids not getting socialization during school at home. My kids understand the idea that if mom's working and they're playing, that one, they're lucky if they get to go play, but at the same time, we're a team and we want everyone to succeed. And if they need to leave me alone at some time so that we can play as a family later together. Great. We need to be giving our children as a generation more skills to live with other people, to love other people, and to be productive with other people. And I personally feel that these five timer tricks really help with that. Just to go over it, check-in times, a food schedule, Subject time blocks, activity times, and do not disturb. Don't be surprised if they ask for a do not disturb time from you. And I've been known to give it to them. If these have helped you in any way, shape, or form, please do me a favor. Share this video or share the corresponding blog post that will be over on Nerd Family hopefully soon. Uh, please let me know what is your biggest time scheduling challenge with your kids and them doing school at home. Be you all the time homeschoolers or be you coronavirus school at homers? Let me know down at the bottom and I will talk to you later. Bye.